Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing my drugstore makeup collection. So I shared my drugstore eyeshadow palette collection pretty recently. So I'm going to walk you guys through everything. I will share swatches and mini reviews. So this will probably be a pretty long video. So I'm going to go ahead and leave timestamps linked down below for the different categories in case there's something specific you're interested in. But I also wanted to film this intro just to mention that I have already done the palette. So I'll leave that separate. And then if you want to see my vanity and the desks, the desk, the singular desk and my storage, I'll leave that video linked down below where I walked you guys through all of that when I did my full collection. Those will all be linked down below. Typically I link all of the products that I talk about in the description box, but I do not think there's gonna be room for all of these. But any other info you need is gonna be down below if you're new here. My name is Kelly. I love talking about drugstore makeup. I love all price points, but I especially love sharing drugstore content. I actually just posted a dupes video pretty recently, so I'll leave that one linked down below and let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, starting off with primers, I actually just have four of these. This is from Hard Candy. This is the Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer Makeup Grip. This one is really great at gripping your makeup and making it last longer. It's kind of a gel consistency and it kind of does hydrate like a tiny bit. This one's from Flower Beauty. It's the Supernova Celestial Skinny Elixir. This is like an oil. Only downside is these little glitter particles do kind of show up on your face. So it looks like a purple tint, but it kind of blends out to clear but then it is so glowy, but just know you're gonna get the glitter and you do kind of see it through your makeup. So that's the downside, but the texture is so nice. I feel like it makes my makeup look really fantastic, especially if I have any dry patches. The finish that this leaves on your skin is so similar to the Dew Drops from Glow Recipe, just with the sparkle. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty. It doesn't look like I've used that much, but I've had this for a while. A little bit goes such a long way. So I usually just like get out a little bit on my finger or the back of my nail. You do not need a lot of this. I don't know that this makes the biggest difference. I think it subtly blurs your pores, but this one's actually not my favorite. But you know, some days if I want a little bit of smoothing, I think it's okay for doing that. And then another huge favorite is the High Adherent Silicone Primer from The Ordinary. This one's only $5. It's kind of a creamy texture, but it's also very smoothing. So it like hydrates and smooths and grips. It does it all and for $5, like you really can't beat it. Okay, I have quite a few drugstore foundations, so let's just start over here. This one is from the Lip Bar. The Lip Bar you can buy at Target or Walmart or on their website, or if you live in Detroit, they have a store downtown. And this is the Just a Tint 3-in-1 Tinted Skin Conditioner. I wear the lightest shade, which is called My Fair Lady, but honestly, it's still like a little bit dark. <laughs> I kind of have to have a tan to make this one work. The coverage I would describe as light, and the finish is pretty dewy. If you're into skin tints and you can find a shade for this that works for you, I think it's a really good drugstore option. Next, I have the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Foundation. I wear the shade Warm Beige L4. This is one of my absolute favorites. The consistency is very, very thin, almost kind of watery. Like you can see, it's just kind of running down my hand. This coverage, I would say, is sheer to light. You can build it up a little bit, but honestly not too, too much. It is pretty sheer and dewy and it just looks beautiful. The wear time is not too long on this, but I would say right on par with most skin tints. Then I have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh, which I actually have not been liking as much recently. I don't know if mine is going bad. I've had it for a bit, but I wear the shade Medium 9W, which is kind of a tan shade for me. This one is also pretty thin, but not as thin as that one that I just showed you from uh, Flower Beauty. Light coverage, but not super buildable. It looks really, really natural and pretty, but it does cling to dry patches, so I do want to note that, and it's quite dewy. So depending on your preference, you might love it, but lately I have not been enjoying it as much. I also have their other Pretty Fresh. This is the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. I wear Light 70W. This one is more medium to full. You can definitely build the coverage up pretty high. Consistency, not too thick, not too thin, but as you can see, Pretty good coverage there, and the finish on this is kind of right in the middle. It's not too dewy and it's not too matte. I could see a lot of people really liking this one. My current favorite, these are all gonna roll. Let me put this over here. My current favorite is this one from Catrice. It's the True Skin Hydrating Foundation. I wear mine in the shade 20. This one also comes with a pump. This is like medium to full, honestly closer to full. You can get amazing coverage from this. And I feel like it looks very natural based on how high the coverage is. Like, 
I was wearing this just yesterday and I kept thinking, wow, my skin looks so nice and it perfected everything, but it really does not look heavy or like I'm wearing a lot of product. This is another favorite. This is the Koki Skin Perfect HD Foundation. This is a nice medium buildable foundation, but it looks incredibly natural on the skin. The consistency is pretty thin. It blends out really nicely. It's like very spreadable. And the finish I would say is like satin leaning dewy. This one out of all of them, I feel like performs like such a high-end foundation. It's very similar to the high-end Oma Beauty one. Speaking of, this is from the Oma Beauty drugstore brand. This is Oma by Sharon C. And this is the Flawless in Real Life Perfecting Foundation. I wear the shade Fair Lady T1. I would say out of all my foundations, this is probably one of the lightest. Now, this doesn't exactly dupe their high-end foundation. I would say the Koki one that I just shared is a closer dupe for the high-end one. But this is still really beautiful, really great coverage to it, and quite a natural finish. I would just say it's slightly thicker than the high-end version and doesn't wear quite as well, but it's still really beautiful. My most full coverage option is this one from Koki. This is their full cover foundation. I wear 20W. I used to also have 30W. I could honestly probably do either. This is a really great shade match for me. As you can see, very, very high coverage. The finish of this one is pretty matte, so if you're into that, I think this is a great drugstore option for high coverage. And my least favorite, the Catrice Aqua Shorens. I normally love powder foundations, but this one just did not work for me. This clings to like everything, and I felt like it left my face kind of peely. It just looked terrible on me, but so many people love this one. Unfortunately, it just did not work for me, so I cannot recommend this. This one is definitely my least favorite, and I plan to declutter it pretty soon. All right, moving on to drugstore concealers. My favorite that I have right now is this one. This is the NYX Born to Glow Concealer. This has a sponge tip applicator to it, and the color that I have in this is the shade Vanilla. This, I would say, is like medium to buildable coverage. It looks incredibly natural on the under eyes. I really love this one. Next, I have the ELF Flawless Camo, or no, this is the Hydrating Camo. I wear the shade Light Sand. This pull is very, very orange on me, so I don't love that. This is probably my least favorite out of the bunch, but I do like it more than their originating original camo concealer. It's all right, it's hydrating, but I find that it looks a little bit heavy on my under eyes. For a nice light medium option, the Koki Be Bright is really good. I've, I've used up a few shades. The one I have right now is medium light, so I mostly use this as a mixer because it's a little bit too dark on its own, but this one's a little bit more thin, kind of runny, so I feel like it looks really natural on the under, on the under eyes and doesn't look too heavy. One of my favorite full coverage options is this one. This is the CoverGirl True Blend Concealer. I have used up one of these. I'm, this is like a second shade. This is the shade Light Nude. There's a swatch of it. As you can see, it's definitely the lightest one that I have. It's very light. So I mostly use this color for mixing. You can see it kind of has a peachy undertone also. This really, really great coverage and looks pretty natural. My favorite drugstore concealer I don't have at the moment, but it's the Milani Conceal and Perfect. This is a color corrector. This is the brand Flower Beauty. So this I think is a really great alternative to the Becca color corrector. The texture is a little bit different. The Becca one is a lot more emollient, whereas this one's a little bit more stiff, but that's the shade. It's this nice like salmony peach. It's great for color correcting. And then I have these two from e.l.f. These are the Flawless Brightening Concealers. So these are like pen concealers. And I have two shades, Fair 15W and Light 26N. These are definitely light coverage. So I sometimes use this if I'm doing a really natural makeup day or I'll use this to brighten. And I would say that's probably the most common use for me is to use this to brighten different parts of the face. And then I wasn't sure to keep this here or put it somewhere else, but it's technically a concealer. It's from Makeup Revolution. It's their Eye Bright, but I have this in a shade that I use for a cream bronzer. So this shade is called Caramel. Definitely kind of warm for a bronzer, but I bought this to test out in my Is It A Dupe video for a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. I don't think it's an exact dupe, definitely not color-wise, but it's a similar performance if you wanted kind of a more sheer product like that. Just know if you're buying it to be a concealer, the coverage is definitely pretty light. 
All right, let's talk powders. I don't have very many drugstore powders. Most of my powders are high-end. But the newest one to me, I just picked this up from Makeup Revolution. This is called the Pressed Powder Infinite, and it's supposed to be a translucent powder. I don't feel like it would be because it's pretty white. I feel like it might leave a white cast depending on your skin tone. I personally don't notice one, but I also don't really love this. I feel like it makes my skin look really dry. That being said, I think it looks beautiful in photos, so maybe for um, pictures or videos, you might like this if you're not doing flash photography, because like I said, I think it would give a white cast. But I also think maybe for an oily skin, you might like this, but I find it to make my skin look pretty dry. This was discontinued, but if you can still find it, it's really good. This is from Essence. It's from their High Beauty line. It looks green, but it is translucent. This is a really nice, subtle, not too heavy powder. I won't spend too long on it because it's not available anymore, but I did really love this one. And my number one recommendation would be this one. It's the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Light Pink, or yeah, Light Pink. This is a great dupe to one of my all-time favorite setting powders, which is the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. The finish of this is just so smooth and finely milled. Like, it looks gorgeous on the skin. It's incredibly blurring. I cannot recommend this one highly enough. Only one drugstore setting spray at the moment. This is the Pixi Glow Mist. If you want a dewy look, this is really great for that. I don't use a ton of setting sprays anymore, to be honest, but for a dewy finish, I do think that this is a nice one. For blush, I'm really surprised that this is all, but this one, I think this one was discontinued. This is the e.l.f. Satin Touch Blush in the shade Satin Love. This is one of my favorites. This was in my project pan for a minute. It's really nice. It's not too glowy, but it's also not fully matte. And then this one for Milani is so good. This is a mini actually, and the shade is called Romantic Rose. It's their powder rose blush formula. You can buy the mini on their website. I don't think you can get the mini anywhere in store. This is a matte formula, but I don't think it looks too matte. I would actually say that the finish of this is extremely similar to the Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes, if you like those. I love this. This is the Cover Girls, the Cover Girl Cheekers formula. This is the shade Pink Candy. The It's like such a light, beautiful pink. I kind of have to layer a lot of this up because it's pretty sheer and the texture is pretty powdery. So just know that going into it, you may or may not love that. Let me turn this down so you can see that a little bit better. But I feel like it just looks so beautiful on the skin. I love using that blush in the winter. And then I have some cream options. My favorite one, oops. Let's set that over there. My favorite one being the NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush in Baby Doll. I've been talking about this so much. So you have a little doe foot applicator. There's the swatch of it. It is ridiculously pigmented, so you have to work fast. And then I have the Flower Beauty Blush Balm in Bubbly. This is a very different formula than the NYX one. These are very gel-like and much easier to work with than the NYX one. So if you are a beginner, I would uh, direct you towards this because it's kind of foolproof. This one is discontinued, but sometimes you can still find it. This is the Pixi Multi Balm in the shade Baby Petal. Too bad they discontinued these because this is such a great dupe for the Milk Makeup Cream Blush Sticks. All right, for bronzer, I actually just have two, which is kind of surprising to me. This is from e.l.f. This is their Primer Infused Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Sun Kissed. As you can see, I've hit pan on this. This is a really great drugstore option. I really like the undertone of this one and it's pretty easy to work with. The texture is just like so smooth and buttery, but not quite as buttery as my absolute favorite. This is from Milani. This is their Silky Matte Bronzer. This is in the shade 01. This, so easy to work with. I do have the lightest shade, so I feel like I can apply a lot of this without it looking like too much, but I have heard from people that say that they find this really pigmented. Here, I turn that down so you can see a bit better. I actually don't find it to be too pigmented, but that might be based on the shade I have since I do have the lightest one. I really love both of these, but my top favorite is the Milani. Oh wait, I almost forgot the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. So I have this one in the shade Tan Lines. This is their new cream bronzer formula. Honestly, I don't like this very much. It's easy to work with and it blends out well, but it fades almost immediately on me and you've seen that happen on camera. So 
I don't really recommend that one. Only three drugstore highlights, which kind of surprised me. My favorite is probably the NYX High Glass. This is kind of a spongy texture similar to like ColourPop Super Shock shadows. So this one I definitely recommend applying before powders, but it's just so natural and glowy on the skin. A recent favorite is this one from Catrice. This is the More Than Glow Highlighter. I have the shade Supreme Rose Beam. Now this one you can get to be extremely intense depending on the brush, but if you go in with a fluffier brush and really diffuse it, you can get something a little bit more subtle, which is what I typically go for. And this one I actually have pan in. This is the Glowy Gossamer Duo from Pixie. I have pan in this shade. So it is a duo. I have the Subtle Sunrise Duo. And this is another one that like you can make it really intense if you want to, or it is super creamy. So if you go in with the light hand, you can get a slightly more subtle effect. For brows, I have quite a few. So let's start with brow gels. My newest is this one from ColourPop. This is the Brow Boss Gel. I have mine in the shade Blonde. It's nice, it adds some fibers. This adds a lot of pigment, and I like that the spoolie is pretty small and precise. This one's pretty similar, but I would say it adds even more fibers, and it's not quite as pigmented. This is the Wow Brow from e.l.f. I have the shade Taupe. With this one, the spoolie is slightly larger, but it's still pretty easy to work with. This is my favorite one. And then I have these two from Flower Beauty. I have the shades Light Brown and Blondie. I would say Blondie is a better match for me. These also add fibers to the brows, but I would say out of the three formulas, these are probably the most liquidy. This is a little brow palette from e.l.f. I honestly don't love this. This is the Bite Size Brows. I have mine in the shade Taupe. You've got two pomades and then two powders. Uh, yeah, I actually don't love this. I feel like the pomades don't last very long and then my brows end up looking kind of messy, but for $3, it's all right, but not my favorite. I have one brow marker currently. This one is from Milani. I adore this. This is the weekend brow. So there's a swatch of it. It's pretty subtle, but that's kind of what I like about it. This is the shade medium brown. One micro tip currently, this one is from Flower Beauty. You have this kind of brush applicator on one side and then the micro tip pencil. That's the shade Taupe and this is called the Skinny Brow. My only downside is for a taupe, I want it to be slightly more cool tone than that. In my brows, it pulls a tiny bit warm, but I really love the pencil. And the rest of these all have a triangular tip. So my favorite one is this one from Ardell. This is the Ardell Mechanical Brow Pencil. I have mine in the shade taupe, which I think is a slightly better taupe undertone than that one. This one is from Koki. This is the highbrow in brunette. This is definitely more of a waxy formula. I feel like I kind of have to tug at it, but I would say it is a nice undertone. And with this and the previous one, they both have a spoolie on the opposite end, but this last one does not. So this is the NYX Fill and Fluff. And again, it has one of these brushes. This one I have in the shade Taupe, and I would say this one is very similar to the Anastasia Brow Definer, but again, still a little bit warmer than I want out of a taupe. Okay, moving into lip liners. I've got two from NYX. I love this wooden pencil formula. This is Peekaboo Neutral and my favorite nude truffle. Two from Koki, but I've definitely used up way more in the past. This is a retractable pencil. I love this formula. This is warm nude and nude. And then lately my most used, this is Essence Tea Time, another retractable formula. This is nice, rosy, kind of like 90s nude lip liner. And then a very popular one, this is Milani Spice. This is another wooden lip liner. This one you can see really pigmented. So I love all of these. Ooh, wait, I missed one. This is Koki Bright Fuchsia. Super, super bright, but this is really beautiful. I don't use that one too often, but when I do, I really love the way it looks. All right, let's do lips now. Now I have three of these from e.l.f. This is probably one of my favorite drugstore lipstick formulas. These are the Seriously Satin lipsticks. These are, I would actually describe more as matte, but my most used is the shade Cream. This one's kind of sheer, so I use it as a topper over a lip liner. This one is a nice kind of peachy color. It's called Nectar. This one is a little bit more pigmented than the other one. And then the Perfect Bright Orange. This is the shade Persimmon. It's so hard to find an orange that's actually orange and not red, and this one is perfect. And these are only $3. 
I also have this one from Milani. I don't like the formula as much. It does tend to bleed, but the color is one of my all-time favorites. This is called I Am Bold, and it's red with kind of a fuchsia undertone to it. It's just stunning. And then one of my favorite nudes, this is from the Lip Bar. This is the shade Baby Bellini. This is really similar to Urban Decay Stark Naked, except the finish on this is kind of more shiny like a cream. I also have a lip gloss from the Lip Bar. This shade is called Control Freak. Now their lip glosses are extremely pigmented, so kind of more like a shimmery, not shimmery, but a shiny liquid lipstick because it's super, super pigmented. And I have one of their liquid lipsticks. This is such a gorgeous color. This is the shade Hot Mess. Again, it's a red, but it's kind of almost like a neon red. It's so pretty. It has a tiny bit of pink to it. And then for gloss, this shade, I feel like so many people would love this. This is the color Rom no, Soft Rose from Milani. This is a really great lip gloss formula. I would say it has a little bit of pigment to it. It kind of looks like it has more there, but once it's on the lips and you kind of like move your lips around, I would say it's got like a medium opacity to it, so it's not fully sheer. Also for liquid lipsticks, a classic. This is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade London. This is probably one of my most used. This, I would say, kind of takes on whatever lip liner that you use, so you can really modify this color by changing the lip liner. And then these last ones are pretty light or sheer. This one is from e.l.f. This is the Hydrating Core Lip Shine, and I have the shade Blissful. So this is kind of like just a tinted lip balm, and it's a nice brown color. And then two lip oils. This first one is from Catrice. It's kind of sheer, but it has a pink undertone to it. This is called the Powerful 5 Lip Gloss. The shade I have is Cherry Blossom Glow. You can see it's like mostly sheer, but it has a tiny pink tint. And then this one from ColourPop I love so much. This is the Lip Oil in Smirk. Again, kind of has a peachy pink tint to it, but still pretty sheer. Not quite as sheer as the Catrice though. Okay, that was my entire drugstore makeup collection. I will leave the palette part linked down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.